Do you know the difference between a Democrat and a Democratic Socialist? If you don't, you're not alone. Hillary Clinton couldn't really answer that question. I'm not a socialist one. and a Democrat. Last well, question. I can tell you what I am. I am a progressive uh -huh. Democrat. I'm a progressive How's Democrat. How's that different than a socialist? Likes... So, what is a socialist? Well, it's someone who typically believes that productive resources are the property of the government, that the distribution of goods and services are administered by the government, and any remaining private production or distribution is regulated by, you got it, the government, not free market. But how does that differ from a regular Democrat? Well, Democrats typically support a strong federal government with powers to regulate business and industry for the public interest, as well as federally funded social services and benefits for the poor, unemployed, and the aged. But a Democrat opposes government regulation in citizens' private lives. Craig Shirley is the author of Last Act, The Final Years and Emerging Legacy of Ronald Reagan. He's a historian as well, and he is my guest on The Real Story. Craig, did I get it right between the difference of a socialist and a Democrat? Yes. Yeah, you did. Uh, the textbook definition, as you said, between a, uh, of a, a socialist is the state uh, owns the means of, or controls the means of production and distribution. Of a communist, the state owns the means of production and distribution. So in America, you know, we used to have what was called a blended economy, uh, and that was part Republican and part Democrat. But now within the Democratic Party is, is that there's very few doctrinal differences between the modern Democratic Party and the modern socialist movement. I would say that, if anything, is, is that Democrats are interested more in power, whereas socialists are interested more in control. All right, let's look at some of Bernie Sanders' policies, because much has been made about the fact that maybe he has not been scrutinized that much yet, and when people hear what he's actually in favor of, they may not like it as much. Demand that the wealthy and large corporations pay their fair share in taxes. Make tuition free at public colleges and universities throughout America, guarantee health care as a right of citizenship by enacting a Medicare for all single payer health care system, invest one trillion dollars over five years towards infrastructure, and expand, expand Social Security by lifting the cap on taxable income above two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Where is all that money going to come from? Uh, beats me. I guess they're going to turn on the printing presses. I don't think that uh, in a socialist economy they worry much about balanced budgets. Uh, they certainly didn't in the Soviet Union, although the Soviets were actually more communistic than socialistic. Uh, they didn't in the Weimar Republic, uh, they, and they don't now in, uh, in the modern uh, Democratic Party, is, which is why we have now a $21 billion or a trillion dollar deficit. Right. They really don't worry about balanced budgets. They really worry more about economic uh, control and maintaining uh, the, the status quo as long as they're in power. One of the really troubling things is that Bernie Sanders is on record in an interview a few years ago as saying that he believed in a 90% tax rate. 90%. Sure. Now yes. he's come off of that, but he won't really say what tax rate he would impose. Why would anyone work? Well, don't forget is, is that uh, part of Ronald Reagan's ideological journey uh, from what he called a bleeding heart or a, a hemophiliac liberal uh, in the 1930s and 1940s to a conservative populist Republican was in part because of the uh, confiscatory uh, tax policies that the FDR administration, uh, <laughs> FDR had a top marginal rate of 90 percent. Now there were obviously many more deductions in those days than there are now, but even so is, is that the top marginal rate was 90 percent and Ronald Reagan was paying it. Okay. I want to take a look at something that might scare some people. Uh, Iowa voters using socialists to describe themselves. 43% are using that. Likely caucus voters, Craig. 38%, yeah, I, 38, only 38% eight, only say they are capitalists. Well, that's part of the failure of, 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 of public education, let's face it, is that they, totally. they don't teach economic theories anymore. And I would dare say is that half those people who say they're, they're socialist are confusing socialist philosophy with social media or being a sociable person. I mean, they don't understand <laughs> ideology. You're hoping for that. Well, let's hope so. I think that uh, we'll find out in the voting, but I think that people are actually confused now today because of the failure of public education. That is such a great point. I want to throw one more poll out at you. New York Times, CBS, recent one on socialism. 56% of Democratic primary voters said they feel positive about socialism as a governing philosophy versus 29% who took a negative view. You know, I have been just so surprised in this election cycle that so many Americans feel okay with being a socialist. Do you really what? think it's lack of education or we're just turning tide here?
I, th I think in that case, uh, Gretchen, it's partially lack of education, partially what is uh, the other side of the, you know, the greener on the other side. And right now is, is that they're, they're witnessing two big political parties that both embrace big government and big corporations, and hand in hand of that goes with the corruption of both parties. And they look at this and they're disgusted, so they're willing to at least entertain the idea, although they might not understand it, of, a, of another governing philosophy. Such great analysis. Uh, Craig Shirley, thanks much. You bet.